Hey guys, it's Max Convexity. How's everyone doing this morning? Thanks for tuning into my channel. This is the Daily Covered Caller, where I talk about these option strategy and the high yield funds, mainly Defiance, but also some, but also some other ones. Uh, yield Max also. All right, so let's start today with a little Defiance. How's that sound? As usual. Triple QI. We'll start with Triple QI. Now, I was shocked and I had to check my math or I checked my copy paste skills because I just copied the trades from the Defiance website. But I was uh, shocked to see they only received $83 for this option where they received $154 yesterday and $145 the day before. Vol hasn't been this low. Look at that. Volatility hasn't been this low in forever. The last time it was this low was uh, July 9th. Isn't that crazy? So I'm going to pull up a chart of the S&P. And let's look at the daily bars and we'll look back to July 9th. I, no, it's right in here somewhere. It was pretty much close to the top. It went a little bit higher after that. Close to the top so far. It looks like the top's getting ready to get, get you know, blown away. But we'll see. All right. So, uh Let's start here with the triple QI, of course. I just couldn't believe they only got that much premium, but all three of them got way less premium. So obviously the market makers don't uh, don't see a lot of volatility today and they price options accordingly. There's not nothing wrong with it, but this would be a good day to buy a straddle if you wanted to buy a straddle relative to yesterday. In other words, a good day to get long volatility. It's the most reasonable I've seen volatility in a long time. Or if, you, if you're bearish by a put or if you're bullish by a call, whatever. But volatility is reasonably priced for once. Uh, daily volatility is. But that's why these guys' dividends are so high this time. Because daily volatility has been lit. Just absolutely on fire. All right. So uh, even though it's only $83, it can still come to 852000 And the really good news is the dividend, or I'm sorry, the earnings per share is it will be at $0.88 cents after today. OK, and the really good news is they lost they had people cash in their shares. OK, well, that made them, they, they, they lost about 10 percent of shares. That's fine. It made the freaking dividend go from a dollar 20 to a dollar 38. It made the dividend go up uh, about by the same amount or a, a similar amount. So anyway, because um, whenever people leave the fund, there's less people to split the dividend with. So uh, I thought that was interesting. But in any event. We'll check out JEPY next, of course. Now, let's see what they received in terms of premium. Okay, now, theirs wasn't too bad. It was 16 compared to 18 compared to 20. I mean, you know, and but I mean, heck, it was 54 <laughs> recently. See, the last time it was in the 16s was, uh, it was 12 on, Ju on July 8th. J you know, by, by, by early July, Vol just got crushed. It was seven by... <laughs> It only paid seven points on on uh, July third. Okay. Well, anyway, of course that was a that was a shortened day because it was a holiday. It was the day before July fourth. Is today shortened? Maybe today shortened. I just don't know about it. I'm watching CNBC, but I don't have the uh, the volume up. But uh, there's no such thing as a shortened day on Tuesday. They always do. It's always either a Monday or a Friday. It's usually a Friday. All right. Okay. So. Um, 16 bucks, we'll take it, and it would amount to, let's see if they can hit it. Let's see if they're in the money or out of the money right now. I'd imagine it's out of the money. Oh, darn it, this thing's not cooperating. All right. Um, they sold the 56.15, so that's the magic number, and the, the market's at 56.18, so of course the points in the money says zero, right? All right. And then running earnings per share is a dollar one, which is crazy. That's insane. Absolutely insane. People didn't sell out of this one. Yeah. You had 5,000 shares leave the fund, but that, that's no big deal. But the dividend estimate's still over a dollar. It's a dollar three or 309. I, I can't get used to the new shares. 
All right, let's look at the Russell High Yield Daily Put Fund, IWMY. All right, now these guys are in the same boat. Look at this premium, nine points. I mean, I bet it was back to July, July 10th. Maybe we're close to top again. Now, just because it was a top last time when Vol caught compressed, Vol could be compressed for months, years. Look at 2018 and 2019, you know, large parts of it, especially 20. Well, look at 2017. It's a better example. Okay. Uh, let's look now at the dollar thirty one. Do we go over the dividend estimate on this one? I forgot. Okay. Oh, no, we haven't yet. All right. So these guys right here, nine dollars. They're going for five hundred thousand, which is about half of yesterday's. But but they sold the twenty one seventy. The market's at twenty one sixty four. Uh oh, Houston, we got a problem right now. Or Austin, we got a problem in my case. A little problem in this one. Now we could do that in our heads too, because it's six points in the money. Really, uh, five point forty three. But we'll just let them do it here. This is the worst mouse pad. I miss my MacBook Pro so much. All right, I said 5.43. I need to work on my math in the head. That was that was a poor effort. I, I should know that. Come on. I need to practice up on that. All right. Um, so these guys are only realizing about 200,000 of the 500,000 they're going for. In any event, it's still 11 cents a share positive on the month earnings per share. And the dividend estimate is still a dollar thirty-one. Let's make sure that's correct. That sounds kind of incorrect to me. I bet it's higher than that. Um, yeah, dollar thirty-seven. I forgot to update it uh, today, this morning. I apologize. Okay, so now we've covered that. Let's look at the charts. There's not much to see on the USO Y spreadsheet. It's a great fund. I guess we should see the dividend estimate, though, right? I think it's a dollar forty still. Jackson, please knock it off. Please knock it off. Oh, I upped it to a dollar fifty. Okay, I need to do my math on that. I'm, that's let's see what the running earnings per share is. Also, sixty four cents positive, a dollar fifty. That seems like a really high dividend. But uh, these guys have been knocking it out of the park. Also, I don't have as much experience at predicting this one as I do the other ones. But uh, before I make my official estimate, I'm, I'm going to reserve the right to lower that maybe a little bit. I mean, I want to look at that and make sure that's make sure there's not an error. All right. So sometimes I could just catch the error with my eye like I did on that last one. I had a feeling that number was wrong. And sure enough, it was. All right. So but back to the charts. Let's look at what USO actually has to do. All right. So they sold off yesterday. These are daily bars this morning. They're they've stabilized a little bit from yesterday. But by tomorrow, they need to be inside these, these these boxes. These options expire tomorrow at the end of the day. So this one goes out too far. But anyway, they, they have a little bit of work to do. Now let's check JEPY. These guys trade SPX options. This thing's on fire. I guess we'll go down the shorter time frame. All right. Green's the uh, intrinsic or in the money amount of the option and yellow is the extrinsic. And it looks like I didn't draw you quite right. The intrinsic is just the amount between the close and the strike price. Uh, I think I was drawing this box on the daily time frame and it, the, uh, the resolution wasn't as good. But in any event, the yellow part or the extrinsic is the out of the money part. And that is what they that's the money they use to pay the dividend with extrinsic. They always make extrinsic goes to zero. So by the end of the day, this profit box will be all green. OK, and, and uh, it'll be in other words, it'll be all intrinsic. The yellow part will yellow part disappears. All right. Let's look at IWMY. These guys trade Russell 2000 options. 
Okay, so this is, golly, this just sold off from the open, and now it's actually under where it's looking like a uh, an actual loss. It, they just weren't making the full profit when we looked at it on the spreadsheet a few minutes ago, but now it looks like it's actually going to turn into a trading loss, or as of right now. So these guys have a little work to do also. All right, let's check out the prominent Yulnax charts. I'm sorry, I don't have profit boxes for these. We're going to go to the buffer. I'm going to start emphasizing the buffer report more and profit boxes less on the yield max stuff. Anyway, then let's see what's going on. All right. Tesla's was up and now it's pulling back. Um, AMD was up and it's going up. Nice. Let's check out all NVIDIA. Oh, AMD's going up, but not NVIDIA. Which one's right? Or maybe it's, well, I mean, who knows? Uh, NVIDIA has earnings coming up. I don't know if anyone saw them. I think I had 63 views of my video about NVIDIA earnings, and that's fine. Don't watch it unless you're really into options. I, I made an option nerd video last night. It lasted about 20 minutes. But in any event, uh, we'll be keeping an eye on NVIDIA options um, and what NVIDIA is doing. But, yeah, it, it looks like it's, it's pulling back today. It's under yesterday's close. So it's within the previous day's range which is rare. Usually it opens outside the previous day's range. So it stays outside the previous day's range, which is a, which is a classic sign that uh, uh, security is trending. The other classic sign is it closes outside the Bollinger Bands, you know, and it did that there, which indicated trending up. It did it there. It did, you know, it's, it's been giving good trending up signals, but this morning it's pulling back. Now, if you're a pullback buyer, a lot of people buy when it hits the middle line of the Bollinger Bands. You can see that's, that's been a somewhat effective strategy. Anything works when the market's going up. You could do anything. I mean, as, as long as it's with calls, as long as you're long in some manner, but you just have to figure out a, a strategy. Um, but any event, we'll see what goes on. But on the, the other side of that is if this sells off and gets under the Bollinger Bands, of course, then it could in, indicate a pull, you know, an imminent pullback. And the last time it did that was uh, the last time it was over the Bollinger Bands. Well, I mean, now the, the last time it was over the Bolger Bands and went under was right here. That was actually a false signal, but it doesn't always do that. This gave a bearish trending signal. So did this. So did this right there. And those were and those were decent trades. All right. Trend has been your friend on NVIDIA. It was trending down for a while. You want it puts and then now you want calls. NVIDIA is just a freaking a monster, of course. All right. So let's check Amazon. Speaking of monsters, let's see what it's doing. It took off. It was lagging, but it finally took out its 200-day moving average on the 30-minute time frame, and that's important. The 200-day moving average, to me, is everything. And it's, it's, you know, right there when it fell, that would have been a nice place to sell. But anyway, as long as it could stay over this, you know, you're hoping that it can put together, a, you know, a, a run-up towards 200. So we'll see. Um, let's see. What else should we check? A little Coinbase. All right, Coinbase is struggling right at the 200-day, opened up and is selling off right now. It's in yesterday's range. Um, let's check Bitcoin while we're checking Coinbase because I bet it's maybe selling off, I figured, since Coinbase was. You can see Bitcoin's kind of been, yeah, been over and over and then under the 200-day and kind of in the in the bigger scheme, kind of pretty much going sideways, uh, you know, for the past few days. Okay, so that's Bitcoin. What else should we look at? Uh, let's look at uh, micro strategies. This is looks just like the Bitcoin chart, or kind of similar. It looks more like the Coinbase chart, to be to be fair. Anyway, okay, so now you guys, let's go to the buffer report. How does that sound? It's pretty early to look at the buffer report because lots of times the, the indexes really haven't moved. These graphs really aren't statistically significant, or I need to find a way to not show these over here so it doesn't mess up the scale. Uh, I'll put, I'll start putting the Bitcoin ones on a separate chart or something. That's, that's probably the best way to do it. All right. But then sometimes ULTY will move similar to Bitcoin. So there's, but I think that might help. Maybe I'll put ULTY and the Bitcoin ones on a separate, on a separate buffer report. 
Okay, well, let's see if we can get any information from this at all. People love I Spy. It's a great, it's great, it's killing it. That's probably a stale quote. I, I don't know. I mean, I doubt it's really up that much when everything's down, but it's fine. Uh, Fepi, everyone loves that. That's killing it. AIPI. Now, those are probably real quotes. Of course, those are real quotes. This one may be too, but this one's just based on an index is what makes me think it's not real. These are based on a really concentrated index of, of 15 stocks, 15 to 20 stocks or whatever. Concentrations of the new trend. I'm sure you guys noticed that. That's what Yomax is doing. It's concentration and leverage. All right. Well, anyway, YMAX killing it. YMAX killing it. I'm not even going to look at the bad ones because it's too early in the day. Let's let's just blow off the bad ones. We'll we'll check it. We'll check it later in the day at the end of the day when it's more statistically significant. All right. I had a couple of channel announcements. Uh, my interview with Jay is tomorrow. I haven't decided if I'm going to broadcast it live or or record it and then cut it together. I, I just haven't decided yet. In any event, I probably will have a live stream at some point to prepare. Maybe just right before, because I do that sometimes to get in the mood. And uh, I might have a live stream like the hour before I talk to him. Uh, any event, I'll uh, I'll keep you guys posted on that. On my option video last night, I forgot to plug in my microphone. The audio's poor. I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, what else? Uh, oh, uh, let me make sure the meeting with Jay's still on. I I, I texted him this morning or emailed him this morning. I, I didn't text him. We aren't bros. You want to go smoke a cigar? Uh, no, I emailed him. Uh, and he hasn't got back yet. But uh, but I'm sure it's I'm sure we're still on. In any event, even if we aren't still on, I may I may not uh, I may not do it live anyway. But anyway, it happens tomorrow between three and four my time. So if you have, uh, I guess if you have. Um, I haven't been checking Discord that much. If you have suggestions, either tune into my live stream tomorrow on questions. And I already have a bunch of them, but sometimes you guys give me an, an idea or, or we figure something out together. that, And then I realize one of my questions was stupid after I hear one of your questions. So I, I want to compare notes. So uh, put your questions in the comments or tune into the live stream tomorrow. Uh, I'll post, I'll post it. I'll do a, I'll do a, a I'll tweet about it whenever I'll tweet or post a YouTube, uh, a YouTube, like what are those things called? Just a YouTube message. And with the, uh, with the time tomorrow. Right. All right. But I'm excited about that. And then like I was telling you yesterday, I have an interview on the 20, 23rd, no 26th with another fund manager. I haven't announced who it is yet. I'm going to just promote the J interview for the next, uh, next four or five days. And then I'll start talking about the other one, but, all right, guys, I really appreciate you for, for being here this morning, and I will talk to you later. Thank you very much.